Hey students, this is lesson 7-1, zero and negative exponents. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to simplify expressions involving zero and negative exponents. Go ahead and do the vocab here, and I'll check back with you. All right, I think it's important for us to just look at a pattern of of numbers written in exponential notation and uh, to come to a conclusion about what zero exponent and uh, negative exponents mean. And remember that an exponent represents how many times you're multiplying by that base. So when you increase an exponent by one, like if I go from two to the fourth, which is 16 to two to the fifth, that's just multiplying by two one more time. Now the opposite of that is if I'm going from two to four to the two to the third, I'm dividing by 2. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. Divided by 2 is 4. Divided by 2 is 2. Divided by 2 is 1. And 1 divided by 2 is, I'm going to write this as a fraction, 1 half. 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. So, um, so what you can think of a negative exponent is dividing by that base um, that many times. And one thing you'll notice in both of these problems, so 10 to the fourth is 10,000, 10 to the third is 1,000, I'm just dividing by 10 each time. So again, 10 to the zero is 10 divided by 10 is 1. It turns out that any number to the zero power is 1. So if you start there, and then 10, then uh, a negative power is just dividing that 1 by that base one time, and a negative second power negative second power is dividing by that base two times. So we get um, 1 to 100 there. So and we can simplify these into a couple of rules. For every non-zero number a, a to the zero power is equal to 1. So basically what we're saying here is any number to the zero power, as long as it's not zero, is equal to 1. Um, and for any non-zero number a and an integer n, any number with a negative exponent is 1 divided by that number with a positive exponent. So 4 to the negative second is 1 divided by 4 to the second, which is 1 16. Uh, 1 divided by negative 3 to the negative fifth power is 1 divided by negative 3 to the fifth. Negative 3 multiplied by itself 5 times gives us a negative number. I believe it's negative 243. Uh, one other way to look at this is if you take a number like 6 to the second and multiply it by 6 to the negative second, you end up, and you can check this on your calculator if you want, but whenever you're multiplying by the um, same base with opposite exponents, it's going to equal 1, which tells us that these two numbers are reciprocals. So if I know that 6 to the second is 36, well then 6 to the negative second has to be the reciprocal of that, which is 136. Likewise, if I know that, say, 7 to the third is equal to 7 times 7 times 7, which is 343, I believe, um, then I also know that 7 to the negative third is the reciprocal of that, because if I multiply those two, I'm going to get 1. So 7 to the negative third is 1 over 344. All right? So let's go ahead and do a couple problems here. 2, 12, 13, 14, 15. See if you understand that. All right. So what is the simplified form of each of these? So our rule says that if we have a negative exponent, it's the same as 1 over the number of the positive exponent. Also, you can think of it as their reciprocals. So 6 to the negative second is the same as 1 over 6 to the second. Um, you can also think of this as being the recipro reciprocal of 6 to the second, which is 1 over 6 to the second, which is 1 over 36. Anything to the zero power is equal to 1. All right, go ahead and try that. All right, uh, sometimes we're going to have to simplify things with a variable. Okay, let's first think of this as three parts of this multiplication. 
3 times a to the negative second times b to the third. Now, um, we're going to define being simplified with exponents as a couple things. All right, number one, to be simplified, we want to make sure that all exponents are positive. And the second thing is all powers with real numbers are written in standard form. And standard form just means the actual number itself. All right, so when we simplify this, um, all we really need to do in this first problem is get rid of this negative exponent. And so we're going to use the rule that a to the negative second is equal to 1 over a to the second times b to the third. Writing these all at fractions, we get 3 times b to the third as a numerator and 1 times a to the second, which is just a to the second as a denominator. So now we have all positive exponents and we don't have any real number powers to deal with there. So, all right, and the second one. Uh, 1 over x to the negative 6 is equal to, really, it's 1 over 1 over x to the 6, or 1 divided by the fraction 1 over x to the 6, which is the same as 1 times the reciprocal, which is just x to the 6. So what you might notice is that if, if there's a negative 6 in the denominator, put it in the numerator, and it becomes a positive 6. And it works the opposite way also. Go ahead and try that. All right, uh, evaluating an, uh, an exponential expression, I'm going to show you two ways to do that. One, the first way we're going to simplify it first without, before we substitute. So we're going to take this and write it in simplified form, which means get rid of the negative exponent. So we're going to think of a to the negative second as 1 over a to the second. And that's 2. So these are all fractions, 2b to the fourth over a to the second. And now I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to do 2 times 1 to the fourth divided by negative 2. And make sure you put that in parentheses. And that's uh, 2 times 1 on top, which is 2. And negative 2 multiplied by itself is 4, which simplifies to 1 half. The second way we could do that is to just substitute into the original. So I'm looking at this up here. And instead of a, I'm going to put negative 2 to the negative second. And instead of b, I'm going to put 1 to the fourth. Notice when I do negative numbers, I put them in parentheses. Uh, and then that's the same as 2 times 1 over negative 2 to the positive second times 1 4, and uh, that's the same as 2 times 1 fourth times 1, which is 2 fourths, which is 1 half. So you could either simplify the expression first and then substitute or substitute to and then simplify. Go ahead and try that. All right, uh, we can have exponential models also, uh, or functions, and um, a lot of times populations are modeled by exponential functions, and here we have that um, uh, population number doubles every eight years, but doubling is multiplying by two, so we're going to use t to represent uh, the number of periods of eight years, and we want to evaluate this expression for t equals zero, t equals negative two, and then decide what that looks like. So I'm going to actually write this as a function, and since it's a population function, let's call it p. So we'll say p of t is 6400 times 2 to the t, and we need to find p of 0, and we need to find p of negative 2. So I'm going to substitute 0 into the function. And then I'm just going to simplify those. And I know anything to the 0 power is 1, so that's just 6,400. And 2 to the negative 4, well, that's the same as 1 over, or 2 to the negative second is the same as 1 over 2 to the second, which is 1 4. Um, so I'm really just multiplying by 1 4. 
and 6400 times one fourth or 6400 divided by four is just Cassie or is 1600. And then thinking about what that means uh, in terms of periods of years, eight years, a zero power means there's zero periods of eight years. So that is the present population. And two to the negative second is uh, dividing by two twice. That's like going back in time or what was the population two periods of eight years ago or 16 years ago. So in this situation, a negative exponent means actually going back in time. Okay, go ahead, you try problem four here. I'll check back with you. All right, that's the lesson. Go ahead and do the lesson check and we'll talk about it next time we meet in class.